The crypto crash is getting even worse. It's getting so much worse. Bitcoin heading down to low $60,000 territory, which was a nice sort of area of interest um, with Bitcoin breaking Wednesday's low. That was our sort of major technical pivots to get, I suppose, short term slash medium term bearish on this uh, on this particular asset. In this case, I want to be coming at this video from a bit more of a nuanced perspective, um, talking about a likely trap in coming and what to be looking for, maybe to open up early this uh, this coming week, as well as the opportunity that you know, comes after that. Now, with all of that said, I want to be putting together in this video a lot of the higher term time for my ideas to come at this from a more holistic view because we are starting to see the picture, I suppose, um, mature here after Bitcoin's failing on Friday. And that was really Bitcoin Bula's, uh, the Bitcoin Bula's uh, big chance right there. And it was, a, you know, it was quite a big indication when we did see um, uh, the Bitcoin Bula's not take control, but more importantly, trade back below that Wednesday low. So going to the chart view right in over here, this is the Wednesday low that I was talking about as you can see. And, uh, and of course, as soon as Bitcoin did trade below it, it hasn't even stopped. Now, I would say that this, uh, that this correction overall is still going to continue as long as Bitcoin is seeing the daily stochastic momentum oscillator position to the downside. As of right now, it is pivoted at 68,800, meaning that as long as Bitcoin is closing below there, momentum remains to the downside, thus risk remains to the downside as well. Um, and if we go to the two-day time frame, that is going to compound a little bit more with the pivot at 66,800. Keep that number in the back of your mind because it will pop up in a second, or maybe a little bit more than a second, but uh, the five-day time frame pivot as well, heading down below 69,500, and the weekly time frame pivot as well, uh, heading down below 72,600, closing later tonight. So all of these things kind of working hand in hand do suggest that we likely have a greater correction in coming here, um, which naturally will take more time. Um, and I'll actually uh, shore up on that idea a little bit later. Now, let me get back to my notes over here. And then, yes, indeed, we also do see five-day hit, uh, not hidden, but regular bearish divergence, very slight right here um, between the highs on uh, on early March and the highs that we just saw uh, as of recent. And the easy target on that typically is somewhere around the yellow 21 exponential moving average um, in this case. Now, very, very short term to kind of reference the title of this video, you know, do we see a bounce? Very likely, yes. Um, for reference, Bitcoin has waked off of the bottom side of the 786, uh, sorry, yes, the 76 level right here um, from the HPDR bands on the daily time frame. And, you know, is it likely to break that on its first pass? Probably not. Probably going to put in a little bit of a bounce. But here is the very specific thing that I want to um, now call back on, which is as long as said bounce fails to get back above, especially Saturday's high which let's just call it 69,000 um, bucks. It is that just a bounce before, you know, trying a little bit lower. Uh, and when I say a little bit lower, I do actually mean probably a little bit lower um, as uh, I don't think that this is going to be like the big bad move that brings Bitcoin severely down. So it looks like Bitcoin's, yeah, in the process of kind of trying to its own bounce right now. How far did we get down? Yeah, 61,000 bucks. I mean, that, you know, that is that I mean that is low side of the range, so fair enough. I mean you could you could say that, that certainly the easy and first target of that has been met. Um, but uh, but over these next couple of days, does Bitcoin try and move maybe back above that region? Perhaps yes, but again, as long as it is below, pressures onto the downside. And still have to be looking for a continuation of this correction, especially in just in terms of time. Um, anyways, uh, moving on from there, I do want to also come at that from one other angle, just showing that uh, if we were to take a nice Fibonacci retracement, 618 level is coming in, um, yeah, right around yesterday's high, Saturday's high. So again, as long as Bitcoin's closing dailies below there, it's just that another lower high before um, at least, you know, retrying the current lows or maybe even a little bit lower. Anyways, um, moving on from there, uh, I also do want to get into this chart. I want to bring up one of the biggest memes in this market, but one of the biggest memes that um, I think actually uh, a lot of people are wrong on, or at least they repeat, you know, they parrot it without actually fully understanding it. And it is the 21 or, or 20 simple moving average or, 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 or exponential moving average. You know, they're going to be very, very close to each other. Um, uh, sort of bull market support, right? Anyways, um, you know, is there something to that? Well, yes, actually there is. I mean, if you do just, you know, visually look at it throughout the history of time, generally when Bitcoin's above it, good. It's this yellow moving average right here. When Bitcoin's below it, generally bad. The slope of it, I do believe also matters as well. But the weekly time frame is actually not the best one to be looking at for Bitcoin um, because that one is a little bit more 
it's, it's a little bit too slow. Um, the five day time frame is actually the better time frame. And uh, in generally speaking, when we do see, for example, you know, price action coming off of uh, especially the last couple mark cycles, Bitcoin likes to base off of this region. And whenever it loses it, especially for the first time, that is a really strong indication that you know, at the very least, you have a nice correction in coming um, and sideways market it. And, you know, at, at the at the most, obviously, re a major macro reversal. Um, so in this case, it has been pretty damn consistent, both the upside and the downside. And uh, right now it is positioned at about 58,000 bucks. Obviously, that number will rise with each and every passing closure. And it's going to close tonight as well. So it's gonna, probably going to rise up a little bit closer to, to 59,000 bucks if I had to guess. Um, it shouldn't be like too dramatic uh, of a change that we see from... Uh, from this period to the next period, but yes, indeed, you know, that will be coming up around that region. Keep that number again in the back of your mind's eye, because if we do actually take a nice Fibonacci retracement on a bullish retracement from the last major low to the current high of this rally, we can see that the 382 Fib is coming in where pretty much right in alignment with that, uh, with that 21 exponential moving average in this case as well. So we have multiple points of confluence. And on top of that, if we actually go back on over here to the HPDR um, bands on the weekly time frame, or actually, sorry, on the five day time frame. Uh, we are going to see actually the, the next 618 level come in and right around that region. Now, I would say the HPDR bands are also quite, um, I would say that they're a little bit more damning, uh, potentially, potentially. So, all right. So if you've made it this far in this video, I'm going to just kind of, I guess I'm just going to kind of spoon feed it for a little bit. All right. <clears throat> With the HPDR bands right here, if you see today close below the 382 level, which is basically yesterday's high, a little bit high, a little bit lower, but, uh, but basically yesterday's high, um, which is 67,700. You're extremely likely, extremely, extremely likely to see a move somewhere back down around the median. Now the median will change. It will change. Like it will shift up here again, uh, as this one will close later tonight. Um, but does it shift up, you know, maybe closer to 59,000 bucks? Probably yes, and you're extremely likely to see a test at minimum somewhere down around there. Um, I can show you, I can basically show you many examples in the past. Anytime that we have seen Bitcoin come back down and close a weekly time frame below the 382 level, it has over time, maybe not on the next, maybe not on the next period, but over time, in this case, this one took 20 days uh, to test somewhere around that median as so you see right there um do we have another example i mean yeah we do have a, a small example right here but not really uh reasonable great example right here again closes below ever so slightly and then next uh next next period does come back down um and again another example right here this one kind of all does it in the same uh, period same thing over here same thing over here so, we don't even have an example right there but we same thing over here same thing over here <laughs> and so on and so forth. Same thing over here. In fact, um, one major thing that I found when doing the research on this particular video is that when Bitcoin is in rally mode or or downtrending mode as well, um, whether it's you know trend mode, just basically either way, um, it's kind of issue right there. It likes to actually use that 38.2 level to the upside or the downside, you know, depending upon which direction the trend is, in this case, the upside, um, as sort of a, you know, as sort of a basing level for the current rally. And whenever it loses that, you know, that's your corrective time. So, um, you know, as if, if Bitcoin were to close back above it today, I'd say, hey, upside pressure is back on, get ready for, I mean, maybe some more sideways, but ultimately uh, upside continuation. Um, but assuming that Bitcoin does close below this um, today, you know, later tonight, yeah, uh, this correction very likely does drag on lower, maybe a little bit below 60,000 bucks. Again, playing in with the longer interpretation of the Bitcoin production cost fundamentals chart that we spoke about uh, briefly yesterday um, as a potential uh, bottoming area for this region. Um, but again, I do believe that that would be an opportunity to long term. Anyways, um, actually did not bring up that chart in this case, but I do have another chart over here for you. Uh, also of interest, if I can get rid of this, is just the general corrective phases that we've seen during this um, during this 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 market cycle. Which let me just make sure that I can see, that you can see over here. Um, throughout this market cycle, we've seen 
about 20% corrections from high to low on a WIC basis uh, play out. Um, and that's kind of been like the, the flavor of the cycle, if you will. This one's a little bit lower now that I see. Okay, 22% instead of 20. Okay, crazy. Um, but again, uh, in this case, you know, We've seen a 22.5% correction, 20.5% correction, 21.5% correction, 21 spot 77. And if Bitcoin were to play back down towards, you know, 58, 59, that would be a 20% correction as well. And again, you know, Bitcoin kind of have this, has a history of doing this as well. In 2017, it was like a 30 to 40% correction or a 35% correction, basically. Um, in, the, in the past market cycle, it uh, got a little bit closer, actually it was closer to like 30% here as well. 20% earlier. Um, so again, you know, multiple things kind of playing hand in hand there. Uh, really, this is, again, hinging upon today's ability to close below, what was it, um, 67,800, basically. Um, but assuming that Bitcoin does, yeah, uh, you know, maybe slightly below 60,000 bucks is going to start to look pretty damn good there. Um, pretty damn good, I mean, for a correction. But again, long term, I, I still want to be very clear that a jubilee, that this, that this is, op is an opportunity um, based off the Bitcoin production cost fundamentals chart, which, you know, do suggest that once the halving happens and the, uh, the cost produced Bitcoin will go up somewhere around 60,000 bucks, anywhere around 60,000 bucks will very likely be a long term great opportunity um, before continuation of the overall macro trend. Um, but for right now, you know, Bitcoin in short term bounce mode, I suspect. Uh, I mean, it's already kind of underway, obviously. Um, the question is, how far does this bounce take? Does this bounce fail yesterday's high or not? If it does not, um, and we and you see a closure above, you know, upper 67 region. Okay, uh, Bulaws once again have the ball back in their court. And also, and also, just want to take a second here to talk about um, the geopolitical situation going on as well. Now, I'm not going to make any sort of political comments on that. Like for fuck's sake, Jesus Christ! If you're in the Discord, please don't as well. I mean, <laughs> the last thing we need is another redacted take on things that are probably way more complicated than any of us really truly understand. But, um, but, but. When it comes to situations like this, more importantly, these do typically mark, you know, around major highs or major lows. Um, in this case, you know, this would be a corrective phase. So this would be around the low. Can things get a little bit worse? Sure. Yeah. You know, if they escalate a little bit more, um, but usually opportunities, usually opportunities as, um, as the market shakes these things off. I mean, you know, call back to, uh, what was it? Um, uh, the fucking, uh, the Russian Ukrainian one a few years ago, right? Marked a humongous low before Bitcoin rallied up like 50%. Um, so you'll see, you'll see these things. It doesn't always have to be war. It can be like all sorts of other things as well. Um, but, uh, but just got something to kind of keep in the back of the mind. So I'll end the video right here. As always, I want to wish you the best, best take care, much love and fuck you and see you tomorrow.